the background took uh, a lot more than I expected, but let's move into the, the main topic, which is distributed information retrieval. Uh, right, so we'll, we'll just give an introduction now, talking, explaining what is distributed information retrieval and the relation between distributed information retrieval and information retrieval, and then the motivation, why we need distributed information retrieval, and which is also a way of starting talking about some of the application of distributed information retrieval, uh, which will be the last uh, point of the entire course. So, what is distributed information retrieval? Well, contrary to what uh, at the beginning distributed information retrieval was, which was uh, uh, doing information retrieval on a distributed system, now the, the current interpretation of distributed information retrieval is that uh, of a system that is distributed across um, different resources, where each one of these resources has its own search engine, its own uh, uh, one or more collections of documents, and, uh, and each one of these resources is, a, is, is assumed to be a totally independent system. Okay? So, another other name for distributed information retrieval is federated search or federated information retrieval, where the concept of federated assumes that there is a sort of a federation of search engines uh, or, or information retrieval system that, have, uh, that interact with each other. Uh, through some, some different architecture, uh, but each one of them is independent. Uh, this is kind of different, obviously, you can, uh, from the standard information retrieval, which is where you have one system which has its own collection and so on. In fact, uh, federated search, or well, distributed information retrieval, is a federation of these systems, uh, and in which one of them, for example, could be a search engine like Google, okay, which indicates a large collection, but it's one single system. So, uh, there's many examples of, of systems like the distributed information retrieval system. Uh, for example, uh, FedStats is a, a system uh, in the U.S. Uh, that has the, the federates or the archives of uh, the federal statistics. Okay? So, there will be lots of different collections, each one of the collection being different in the data that it, that it has and in the kind of query that can be issued will have its own search engine with its own specific retrieval models and there will be a, a front end for which you can access all the collection of the Fed stats. The same for Pub, PubMed which has a lot of collection of uh, medicine, the US Census Bureau, Westlow which is the largest uh, um, commercial um, system for searching for laws, um, Medline, which is instead public for medical publication, Cheshire, for example, is the federation of all the digital library of the California state. Um, again, you have one front end, you issue your query, your query, well, actually, I'm going to go to that, but basically your query gets then sent to all these different systems, and this system sends back the results, okay? So this is one particular architecture, so we'll, um, we'll see different architecture in a minute, but why do we need the IR? Well, we need the IR uh, for different reasons. Uh, the first reason is what is called the deep web, okay? Um, so Sorry, what is the deep web? The deep web is everything that is on the web that a search engine cannot harvest, okay? Now, uh, why can it not be harvested? Well, it could be, for example, uh, things that uh, you know, whoever created that uh, um, the web, um, uh, that, that uh, website, decided that it doesn't want to be harvested. Okay, there is a file called robot.txt that uh, tells to the search engine uh, if it can harvest or not uh, some part uh, of the um, of the web um, of the of the server. Okay, um, but also there are things that are totally uh, hidden uh, from search engine, like for example um, uh, stuff in the intranets, uh, stuff that is uh, behind pages that are, for example, held in a database. For example, uh, pages that contain uh, information about flights. 
for example. Information about flights, these are not pages. These are, there is a database, and database responds to you when you issue a query with the information about a particular flight, creating a page that you can see you know, once you issue the query, but then as soon as you move away, it disappears. So there's no way a search engine can crawl that. Okay? So information contained in, uh, in all these resources is what is called the deep web or hidden web. And the Eden web uh, has been estimated to be more than 100 times bigger than the actual visible web. Okay? So this information, can, you, cannot, you cannot find it for a search engine. The search engine, at best, can identify the resource. So if you want to fly by KLM, and you want to know what time is the flight uh, tomorrow morning, earliest, you know, for, for KLM, I don't know, St. Petersburg to Amsterdam, well, you will not find it unless somebody wrote it on a web page out of his own mind, you know, this information. But you will not find the official source. You will, they, a good search engine would say, well, ask KLM, you know. <laughs> what should I know? Okay? And it will point you to the KLM web page where you will have to write your query and, uh, and, and get the results back. Okay? Um, now, uh, so that's... That's what is called the hidden web. So this is one of the motivation. Uh, you know, a good search engine, for example, uh, can can give you this. So if I want to know, uh, you know, a date of a particular film, uh, um, for ex now I only have written IMDb here, but I could have written IMDb and then the title of a of a film. It will not have found that. It will just have given me this uh, link. And by the way, since he knows that behind that there is a database. Uh, to save me time, it will issue me with a query box where I can issue directly my query to the database. But the reason it does that is that the search engine can stop there. Well, only stops there. It cannot harvest the content of the Internet Movie Database, for example. Okay? Um, unless the Internet Movie Database you know, makes that available. Okay? So, for example, this, you, you could not do this, for example, for Amazon. Until Amazon discovered the value of getting you, know, you to be able to find a particular title of a book through, uh, uh, through Google. In that case, what did they do? Well, uh, an easy thing that they could do is just create on a server the entire you know, uh, queries that you could, uh, with all the titles of the book, for example, that you can issue to their database. And when the, uh, uh, a crawler arrives there, it just points to, uh, to that server so that they can crawl the entire things. Okay? But one problem with that is that this will be out of date very quickly. Uh, when, a database, when a new book is added in their database, somebody needs to create the page, put it in, the, in that server, or, and wait until the crawler gets to that, to that server and, and, and crawl the, the collection. Okay? Even if there's some modification that is done on the, on the data contained in the database, again, the page needs to be created and then, and then harvested. Okay? Uh, but uh, in the next thing, yeah. uh, it goes to some patient. <laughs> so yeah. We just yeah, and I'm assuming, well, that, that's a good question. I'm assuming that they will do that for the latest films. Ah, okay? Because, okay? yeah. for example, there's no reason that why <laughs> this should have come out to my query. Most likely, it's an advertising link. Oh, yeah. Oh, that could be, yes. Yeah, that could be another question. Time. Yeah. So the fact that that single film out of uh, tens of thousands that that database you know, holds came out, you know, well, me asking for that database is either an advertising, which is a good, a good suggestion, or, uh, well, there could be also, it could be also that a lot of people, you know, there's a rating here, okay? And it says from 26,000 users. So each one of these ratings probably reflect a page, which is the review, okay? So basically, that means that there's over 26,000 links that point to that page. Okay? So, uh, as a result of PageRank, which is the algorithm that uh, Google uses for the, the retrieval model that Google uses uh, for, for the ranking, uh, you know, this could come up whatever query you ask there. Uh, but check, you know, if you check in six months and you ask exactly the same query, you will not find that there. Where they describe how they are dealing with the deep web, and it is called um, I don't know, maybe, uh, discovering the deep web, and uh, they explain that you need uh, not, not only marking 
web, but even exploring and they have a heuristic algorithms so within making special questions, um, queries in the form and indexing the results and so yeah. So uh, how did uh, your distributed uh, information journal techniques help? Um, it, it will be one of the topics that we will uh, talk in a minute, what is called query-based sampling. Or you can sample a hidden web uh, basically by issuing automatic queries. Uh, we, we, we'll go back to that. Uh, no, it's trying, uh, it's trying to do that uh, for some resources. But uh, it, there is no way, you know, that by sampling you can discover the entire content of a database. That's only a way, for example, of knowing what the database is about, okay, which is in fact one of the top. And then, and then it will point, so uh, I could have written here, you know, movies, for example, and it would have pointed me at this because he knows that this database deals with movie. But, it will, you know, but if I say a particular movie, it will not be able to find me that page of that, mo of that movie. Uh, you know, or it can do it, let's say, for some, or, but not for others. This is an example. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's just because the IMDB is uh, well, crawlable. Yeah, because they made it crawlable, for, or they made part of it crawlable. Mm. Okay, but anyway, you know, the, the, the hidden web is, apart from, you know, the, in, the, in the search case, there's a, a lot of other hidden web, you know, for example, the, the IBM internet, you know, it's pretty huge. Well, there's no way you can see anything in there, okay? Um, at best, the search engine can point you to one of the gateway, you know, to enter, but then if you don't have your keywords and so on, well, your password, you know, you will not be able to enter. Federated search is another, exa another example of why we need distributed information retrieval. Um, um, the, um, the, the problem is, uh, is in this concept of uh, one fits all. Okay, if you, uh, we, we just seen in information retrieval that, you know, if I um, have a query, if I'm somebody that is interested in pages on the web, I'm, I'm, I could say I'm precision oriented, okay? If I'm a medical doctor, a lawyer, or something like this, I'm more recall oriented. Plus, we've seen that, you know, there's documents that are, you know, a patent, for example, is several pages. Uh, news wires, is usually no longer than three or four lines, okay? So the kind of things, plus, but, it, it, but and it's fact, another document that is a couple of lines is a blog post. But a blog post is a totally different language than a news wire. It's more, um, more informal, expressing opinions, and so on. Uh, um, so, and this is the reason why there are many uh, information retrieval models. Now, if you take the search engine, why should a search engine have one model that fits every, every user and every kind of document? Okay? That's no good. That's why uh, the concept of federated search, if I want to search blog, let's make a search engine for blog. If I want to search um, patents, let's have a search engine for patents. Now, I may want to search information that is contained both, you know, in a, could be contained both in a patent and in a, uh, in a, in a, in a blog. Uh, then, in that case, instead of having a system, find, trying to find a model that would uh, be able to index equally well patterns and blogs, I may as well to the two different systems and pass the same query to these two systems. Okay? This is what um, a federated search is about. Uh, plus, you know, this enables also other things. For example, preserving the property rights of the resource owner. Okay? I have my own collection. You know, I can ask people to search it, but why should I ask, why should I, um, and I can let uh, people, you know, to access it and see the document, but why should I let Google take it away from me, you know, harvest it completely and take it away, you know. Uh, I, plus, you know, uh, if I want to give you uh, always the, the up-to-date answer to your query, uh, you know, why uh, should I wait for Google that comes and harvest my resource maybe every three days, uh, you know, and therefore, you know, give you, uh, you know, through Google, you know, the wrong answer or, the, or, or showing that I don't have a document, which in fact I have, okay? 
Um, so my, my index, if I own this resource, my index will always be up to date. The resource is created in its high quality. If I have to make some changes, these changes will be reflected immediately in my search engine. While uh, somebody that's harvesting my content, you know, it will be his policy on, on harvesting. So, for example, uh, you know, we, there's a lot of these federated search, federated uh, digital library, federated search. PubMed, for example, has all these sub-collections. Well, all these collection of collections, for example. Uh, proteins, there's probably you know, several um, collections in there. So genome and maps, these are all different collections. Each one of, of these grouping of collection have its own search engines, which is able you know, to deal specifically with this kind of document and the specific kind of user that they have. But you can, if you put a query there and you search all databases, your query will be sent to all the databases and processed by each one of the databases with a different system. And then you will get the results back. Another approach is meta search. Let me start with an example. Well, you probably all know about Metacrawler, okay? Or, or other systems like Dogpile, uh, All in One News, Savvy Search, and so on. Uh, these are uh, search engines which are called meta search engines. So they don't do any indexing themselves. But they just take your query and send it to all the two other search engines and then join the results. Why is that? Because no search engines have crawl the entire web. Uh, different search engines have different uh, retrieval system. Um, different search engines have different policy in crawling different parts of the web, depending if they give preference to one geographical area or another or something like that. So, you know, people start to say, well, why should I, you know, if I want to issue a query, why should I have to choose between giving it to Yahoo, giving it to Google, and so on. Let's make a nice interface where my query is sent to Google, sent to Yahoo at the same time, get the results back. If something is at the top in Google and Yahoo, well, will be the top in my, in my meta search system. But if something is not found by Yahoo and found by Google, I will still see it, and vice versa. Okay? So you get a system like this. Such that, uh, each of the databases, uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly what it does. Uh, of, of yeah, of federated search. Yeah. Yeah. In uh, same is done in meta search, although there's not a lot of uh, uh, you know most search engine will accept just keywords, so there's a lot of uh, a lot of um, query modification that is done. But your queries will be sent to Google, Yahoo, and Bing, and ask at the same time, and these are the results, okay? Well, there's some ads at the beginning, uh, I'm afraid, as usual, and then you will find, for example, that if I search University of Lugano, I get this page at the top because this was found by Bing, Yahoo, uh, um, search, what is that search? Well, search another search, and ask.com, you know, at the top, uh, all together, okay? Okay, and the last thing is aggregated search. Um, uh, which is also called uh, vertical search, okay? Um, so, if you think again of the fact that uh, the same query may be relevant for different reasons, okay? So, if I, um, for example, um, I put the name of the hotel where I'm staying here in St. Petersburg, what do I want? Do I want the web page of the hotel? Do I want to see where it is on the map? Do I want to see some images of the rooms? You know, my, my, I'm booking it, let's say. Do I want to see some reviews? Okay. Well, do I have, you know, how can I, well, I could say that. Okay, I could say review and then the name of the hotel or map and the name of the hotel. Uh, but why should the system not give me all this information, which, by the way, is done, if you look at Google, is done by different search engine. Okay, if you put a query and you want a map, you have to expressly say map and it will give you the maps. If you want reviews, it's that. If you want documents, it's the, you know, books, for example, it's book and so on. So, you know, uh, why should I, if I write, for example, this name of this hotel in Geneva, you know, why should I have to say I want a web page, I want an image, I want a video, I want a map and so on? Well, most are changing now, uh, and these are called vertical search, meaning that it is the same topic, but it's on a vertical, you know, all the, all the images about that hotel, all the video about that hotel, uh, all the books about that hotel, or even my, you know, my mail about that hotel, okay? In that case, well, what m many good search engines, well, Google, Yahoo now, for sure, will give you is what is called an aggregated search. They will send that query to all the 
different components of their, uh, their searching uh, engine, and they will aggregate the results, giving you a map, the pointer to the web page, the address, uh, and pointer to reviews uh, uh, you know, at the same time. Okay? So once you have, you know, this is the top results there, you can click them to whatever you want. You click on the map if you want, click on the reviews, click on everything you want. Okay? So again, the technology behind this is distributed information retrieval. Questions on this? Good, that was easy in fact. Okay. Well, all right, there's a question. Yes, you know, when we uh, try to find something in different systems, maybe we will have uh, answers on about, well, different hotels, you know, from each of them, and after that, we merge them. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's true. Uh, yeah, uh, definitely. In fact, this is, uh, this is kind of difficult because they, it, it, basically what will happen is that it will have to pass this query to all the different uh, components and be sure that then each one of these components is talking about the same hotel. Now, because this is kind of difficult, the first thing that uh, search engine will do is that they will parse the query and see if this is one query that is worth going through this trouble of doing a vertical search. And they have a classification system that do that. In fact, if you... No, I give you I give you an example. There I wrote a very clearly the name of the hotel. Okay, let's say I misspelled or I didn't put La in uh, uh, De La Pe. Okay, well this may create some confusion. If I make that, it will not answer in the same way. Okay, it will not do an aggregated search. It will drop it. It will just give you the standard web search. Because that's the one I clicked, you know, web. Okay? So first of all, he has to do a classification. Is this a query that is worth doing vertical search? Uh, and he will do this by analyzing the results. If the results are all perfectly matching the name, then he says, okay. You know. Otherwise, you know, the, the risk of screwing it up, you know, is too high. You know, and I prefer to just to answer with a standard search and standard pointer to the page. Yeah. Okay, so architectures. Um, oh, I'm, I'm supposed to be finished. Yeah. Mark, it's you. <laughs> Still you five minutes or ten minutes? <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, just this, just this topic. Then I have an hour and a half tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'm, I'm leaving the, 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 big, the big part for tomorrow, but I want, just want to talk about architectures because then all the rest we're going to be talking about tomorrow will be one single of the architecture of the um, five uh, that I'll describe now. Okay, so why did I... Great, I wrote four here, and here's five. Uh, oh, yeah, because there's an hybrid one, okay. Um, so, um, there's different taxonomy of distributed information retrieval systems, okay? Well, sorry, there's different types of distributed information retrieval system. Therefore, here is a taxonomy. Um, the way you can think of different uh, DIR architecture is that you, you have to think of the, if the indexes are distributed <coughs> or if they are um, centralized. Okay, so let's start with the distributed indexes. That means that the indexes are held by each one of the resources, okay, as opposed to centralized where there's different systems, but there's uh, uh, a different uh, system that will take your query and answer it, but there's one single uh, index. So, one example of distributed information retrieval is a peer-to-peer -peer network, okay? Um, you're probably familiar with, um, I don't know, whatever is your preferred system of uh, files, file sharing. Um, 
this is a, a, a peer-to-peer, well, the, the, the system, the file sharing system that uh, you, you're, going, you're using uh, will probably have a search component. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to find what are the information that other peers contain. Now, most uh, search uh, file sharing systems that are available now on the, on the web are pretty simple. So you are searching for file by uh, giving the title or some metadata or something like that, okay? Uh, but there are more advanced systems that are used, for example, in internet or something like this, which actually do peer-to-peer -peer distributed information retrieval, where you're not simply searching for uh, a file that has a particular title or a, or a particular uh, description, uh, but you're searching for actual content. And in that case, uh, what happens is that each one of these uh, nodes will have its own uh, system, retrieval system, independent from all the other, which will index the resources there. Uh, then what happens is that one of these nodes can issue a search. The search obviously first will be done locally, uh, but then it will be also broadcasted to other uh, peer according to whatever architecture uh, this peer-to-peer -peer network has, which could be centralized, for example, one of these nodes for example, the, I don't know, uh, this one, for example, may contain uh, some indexes of all the other nodes uh, in the network or all the nodes in the neighborhood, you know, depending if it is a centralized, a hierarchical, or a, or a pure peer-to-peer -peer architecture, where um, in that case, no one of these network, uh, of these nodes in the network will have knowledge of what the other, peop what the other nodes will, will contain, but the only thing they can do is just get a query from this one, for example, and just broadcast it. In that case, the, the, the peer-to-peer network will be flooded uh, with copy of that query until somebody will say, oh, I have this information, and then this information will find a way back to the uh, peer that issued the query through uh, following the trail um, that, that was used to, for the query to get to, to that node. Okay? Here, the indexes are located with the resources. Uh, some part of the index can be distributed or not. Uh, otherwise, you know, it's a pure peer-to-peer. -peer. Nothing is distributed. And queries are distributed across the resources, and the results are just merged by the peer that originated the query. Okay? This is one architecture which we will not do. The architecture that we will do, uh, and in fact, actually, it may well, okay, I'll do it now, um, is what is called the broker-based, okay? So, assume, which is similar, well, take a peer-to-peer. -peer. Assume that one of these peers is a super-peer, okay? Uh, is the one that uh, gets all the queries, nobody else can get queries, if not through this super-peer, okay? Then you have, well, then you can call this super-peer a broker, okay? Uh, the super peer gets the query and distribute the queries um, to the other nodes. Now, this super peer is smart enough that then instead of flooding the entire nodes with a copy of the query, basically sending the same query to everybody, is smart enough that says, oh, this, this will n never be able to answer this query, but that node will, okay? So he has some knowledge of where to send the query to, okay? And will get the results back from these nodes, okay? So the indexes they, uh, is still located with the resources. The broker doesn't know anything at all, doesn't know the content of the, well, that doesn't, know, doesn't have any, well, does have some knowledge of the documents, but doesn't have the documents, okay? So he only, the broker only knows that, for example, of these three resources, if a query comes in and he talks about medicine, well, this resource has document about medicine, these two don't. Okay, so I won't bother sending that query to these two resources. I will only send it to this one. And the document that I get back are the ones that I'll show to the user. If more than one resource is a good match for my query, then I have an additional problem that I want to merge the results coming back, for example, from these two uh, nodes and merge it in such a way that I remove duplicates and that I present the user with a single rank list instead of two rank lists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, the broker base is, uh, all aggregated search systems use a broker based architecture. Um, and then we have crawling, okay? The classic uh, web, well, okay. So these two uh, indexes are located with the resources. Uh, in these other two, crawling and metadata harvesting, we have that the, uh, the indexes 
are uh, not distributed, but are held by a single, call it super, super peer, okay, uh, which not only has knowledge of what these uh, other nodes contain, but actually can go to the node and take away all that information and take it back and, and have his own index of what these other resources contain. This is what a search engine does, okay? It uh, goes to one server, and instead of using whatever search facility there is in that server, if there is one, just harvest the entire content, take it back, and index it through his own uh, algorithm. Okay? So resources are crawled, documents are harvested, and indexes are centralized. In that case, the, the, when a query is issued, there's n it doesn't act like a broker where he says, okay, who is the best one that, should an that could answer this query and pass the query? He just, he has all the document there, he answers that query directly, and then either he shows you the document from the document store that we talked about before, or simply says, okay, you know, this is the document, I don't have the document, but find it there, okay? But it answers the query already using the centralized uh, uh, index. Another way of doing this, uh, which is very popular with the, um, uh, with the, in the digital libraries, uh, now, okay, what is the problem with this system? The problem with this system, uh, with this architecture, <coughs> is that you have to have permission of crawling, and you have to crawl um, regularly. Otherwise, your information may change, but your indexes may reflect the last time you visit that page, uh, that, 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 that information, and therefore be out of date. So, um, the digital library, but on the other, uh, well, and also, yeah, uh, uh, basically you need to have permission of taking away everything. Um, the metadata, uh, the, sorry, the digital library, people don't like that, okay? If the, the Library of Congress will let you search, will let you do whatever you want, look at the document, but you're not gonna, they're not going to let you harvest the entire content, okay? Take it away from them. And the same for a lot of libraries around the world, okay? Um, so, uh, one way, of, but on the other hand, they want you to search this information. So, one, um, one popular um, architecture in the digital library world is what is called the Open Archive Initiative, Okay, where basically they develop a protocol for metadata harvesting. So what happens is that you have a broker, but the broker uh, will be a, well, considerably more intelligent than the broker we've seen before that simply knew what their resources were good for. This one will actually know how to answer your question, but not because he has harvested the document, but because he was given some metadata from the uh, digital libraries. The digital library agreed to send information, not the full content of the document, but the title, a description, a summary, something like this. They give it for free. By the way, every time there is some little change in, in this data, uh, the protocol will inform this, this intelligent broker that some change has been done and will actually update this. So it will be done pretty, pretty fast. But the, this, this this uh, broker, call it broker again, but it's not a broker, you know, this portal, let's say, uh, will uh, be intelligent enough to process your query locally and then to say, you know, this is the, the document that you want, but I don't know, own the document. You can find the document there. And if you have access to the document, you get it. Otherwise, you don't. Okay? So the Open Archive Initiative developed this protocol for, um, uh, where you can harvest only the metadata, not the full content, okay? And, uh, and the kind of metadata that you can have is sort of Dublin Core, which is a specific kind of metadata according to a particular format, and they, they're, using this, uh, a, they're using HTTP and XML format to exchange this information. And, uh, and this, as I said, has been pretty popular with the digital library, that now there's a lot of federated digital library around. And uh, finally, there is also an hybrid approach, so these, those were the four main ones, okay? So, uh, let me go back. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer and broker base, where the, the indexes are distributed, and crawling the full content, or crawling, harvesting, uh, only the metadata uh, when you, want, you have a centralized index, okay? Um, and then there's an hybrid there. The hybrid mixed the crawling with the uh, broker. What it does, instead of crawl harvesting the metadata, it harvested the indexes, 
Okay? Uh, by harvesting, the, well, the, one of the problems here with the metadata harvesting is that you can only answer questions or queries that uh, are on metadata, not on full content. Uh, if you are able to harvest the index, uh, because of the fact that we talked before that the index is a bag of words, you, well, you, you know, if you reduce this page to a bag of words, you won't be able to understand what, what, you won't be able to read it. It's not more the original, but it will still be able to understand what it talks about. Okay? So, you can harvest the indexes, but um, uh, without basically taking away the content. And because you've harvested the indexes, then you will be able to answer content-based, you know, full content uh, queries. So this is what this hybrid uh, architecture does. Okay? Uh, and, could, and one way of implementing this is through, again, the Open Archive Initiative uh, protocol for metadata harvesting, where you extend it instead of harvesting the metadata, you harvest the index. Okay? So, to finish, and then give the word to, to Mark, uh, what we are going to be talking uh, for the rest of the course tomorrow uh, is how we implement a distributed information retrieval system, what are the main components, what are the main issues uh, for a broker-based architecture. Where I remind you the way the broker-based architecture works is that there is a broker, the broker knows about the contents of these resources. We'll, tomorrow we'll, we'll talk about how oh, does he know about the existence of a resource and how oh, does he know what the resource contains. And when a query gets issued to the broker, the broker decides uh, where the query should be sent, uh, hopefully not necessarily to all the resources, but only to some of them. We'll get the results back, compare the results, and produce a unique ranking. They get presented to the user as he was searching a single system, while instead it may be searching, you know, thousands of the systems.